This radio right here is from Mr. Byers' collection. I've taken this one because it is absolutely dreadful. That is the only reason that's why it's stuck out. The Bakelite is terrible. The cord is ripped off. It, it doesn't work. And we're going to see what we could do with this. Um, I don't know. I could tell you that mechanically the knob works. You know, the on-off knob clicks. And, and that's all I got. It's been broken. It's been poorly repaired. And somebody tried to paint some shellac on it. This is not dirt. I've done a test area right here. That was me. You'll see where it's nice and, and clean. And, and that's it. Um, the rear is intact. The cord is cut. Probably better that way. Seems to be external uh, antenna. Got nothing more. There are tubes in there. They're metal jacketed tubes, not glass. Probably in a, a five tube set. We're going to take a look. The radio has been split from the chassis. It's absolutely disgusting, as you might expect. Uh, the inside of the radio didn't fare any better, but it is intact. This radio might be salvageable. It might be able to be cleaned up and polished, what have you. Uh, we'll look deeper. Here's the, uh, the big light. We'll see what could be repaired. A lot of dirt. Let's just wash this off. This, this is terrible. I was able to get the radio cleaned out. All of the dirt was removed. And luckily, the repair job was so bad that when I added hot water to it, I was able to get the seams to swell and separate the glue from the Bakelite. So I was able to remove all of the repair work that was done and take it out of the radio. I have it stacked up behind the radio right now. So without causing any further damage, I was able to remove all of the repair work. This all has to dry and dry out, which will take several days now, which is okay because I'm going on vacation, uh, so that the uh, repair work can be redone again correctly. But all of these will be uh, glued back in properly um, and filled so it can be sanded back down. The pieces that were removed uh, look like this, and this is what came uh, out of the unit in the uh, the ends of these are swelled as well. So after about seven days, six or seven days, it'll be nice and dry again. I could almost bet you as this sits, uh, blow this out, you know, clean it up, get all the dust out. Uh, the electrolytics are garbage, right? Test the non-electrolytic capacitors, maybe a couple of dry ones, make sure they're okay. Uh, test a couple of uh, voltage dropping resistors and make sure that, that they are still okay. And then, and then tune the cans on this radio. And I bet you dollars to dimes this thing comes right up like it's nothing, uh, so long as the tubes are still good. And, and all these tubes are, are really easy to find. So this is like, this is like, you know, like a, a one day, two day restoration, depending on, on what parts have to be ordered. And that's it. So we could, uh, clean this up and get started. So looking at the tubes here and looking at the radio, this is your uh, typical transformerless AC-DC death trap. Uh, there's no transformer, obviously, so the tube uh, complement is such that the heater voltages equate to the line voltage. Uh, you can see 35 and 12 and 12 and 50 and 12 comes out to 120 volts plus the, um, uh, the light bulb and what have you. Uh, it's just like my uh, Holocrafters. I have a couple of sets like this. Uh, that is probably uh, also why they have such extreme isolation. Uh, these things will kill you uh, without mercy, uh, especially if you have them wired backwards and you have uh, um, the, the hot lead going to the chassis. Even when the radio is, is powered off, uh, the chassis is still hot and, and the off switch, you, you touch the chassis and touch ground and kill yourself when the radio is not even powered on. So just wanted to point that out, identify the tubes. I'm going to pull up the schematics as well and then make sure that uh, the tubes are in the right sockets. I, I have a pretty good feeling they are. Uh, these metal tubes are pretty resilient. The glass tubes, not so much. And they could be the original complement. I see there's some RCAs, uh, some non-RCAs. I don't know. 
uh, we're going to do the best we can to see what we can do with this uh, on the cheap. You take them tubes out of the chassis and all of a sudden it seems like there's a whole lot of room to work. The tube sockets are pretty crusty too. I'm sure they'll clean up nicely with some deoxid. It was interesting trying to pull them out of there. But there they are. They could use a bit of cleaning too, but all in all, there isn't a little there isn't a lot of oxidation on the pins themselves. I'm sure they'll clean up very well. I'll tell you what, these tubes are not going to win any beauty contests, especially the, the metal ones. They have a lot of a lot of rust on the bases. RCA and uh, Kenrad right here. Uh, two Sylvanias in the middle. The glass ones always clean up a lot nicer, right? This one's got a, a slightly loose base. Uh, still in all, like I said, at least they cleaned up. Uh, the tubes haven't been tested yet. Uh, hopefully they work. Like I said, we're trying to do this on the cheap, and we'll see what happens. If anything, you know, mark off the marquees here if they work. Hit them with a little... Um, a little uh, satin Krylon and call it a day, put it back in the radio. Uh, this, or just leave them like that for a little character, right? It'd be cool if it worked and in that condition. I think so. This needs to this needs to go outside and get hit with the compressor. That's the next step for this thing. So a big improvement that was blasting the radio out with air. Moved about 60 years of dust from this unit. You can now clearly see everything, especially through the uh, open air capacitors there. I could turn the radio over now, have a look on the underside. You can see these old electrolytic capacitors that definitely need to go. A couple of other items. This looks like a resistor that got hot, or maybe that's just how it was designed. I'm thinking hot though. Looks as th this looks look like looks like a capacitor, but it looks like a later capacitor that was put in uh, much later as part of a repair. And these are the original capacitors and this transformer you see here is the uh, is the output transformer uh, like I said there is no power transformer in this unit and some pretty shady wiring so this is what we got to work with somebody's definitely been in the unit before this was a repaired unit no doubt if you're still not thoroughly amazed at the design of this radio and how unbelievably unsafe this design is You'll be further amazed by the fact that there is no fuse in this design. We can see that the electrical wires come in and one of them goes right here to what I believe to be the first side of the uh, heater circuit, right behind this resistor. You can't see it, but it's going to a tube socket that, that jumps off to other sockets, right? The other side goes right to the on off switch right here that, you know, that provides a, a full disconnect. And that's it. There's no fuse on this radio. So there, there's not even there's not even a secondary safety here. So I mean at least the, the holocrafters, if if something happened and there was enough current that you know, like in like an amp that went through more than an amp, the fuse would blow. This one has no fuse. I think I'm going to put a fuse in here uh from, from something in my collection because this is this is nuts. Who builds things? Even back then, I mean, even back then, they they put fuses in these things. There's, I I just I'm I'm dumbfounded. A quick test of the surface was checked with a very high grit sandpaper. I I did it obviously on the inside first, making sure that the bake light wouldn't be damaged with that particular grit. I was able to pull a lot of the defect out of the grain. Obviously, the the sandpaper leaves it uh, uh somewhat uh white looking. Uh, this could be polished out with uh, with some paste, some diamond paste. Obviously, it's going to be a lot harder than sandpaper. But to pull all this crap out and all this imperfection, left it a lot a lot smoother looking. So I'm going to polish this area now after the sandpaper. See how that comes out, and then we could continue. Uh, obviously, doing this is a lot quicker than using polish, which would take forever. After polishing out the small section, you could see that uh, within the shell of this radio, the Bakelite can be fully restored uh, using the right techniques. You could see the shine has been restored to this corner here. This is what the Bakelite originally looked like. And here is what we have now. Even with a little more work and buffing, probably get even more shine to this. I didn't uh, uh, do this back corner. This was just sanded, but not shined. But right here got the attention so the whole radio can be done the sanding 
uh, with the sandpaper the right for it really speeds up the process it, I mean I did this in like two minutes to this whole section doing some bulk sanding uh, and not cleaning but you know just sanding it down this this side here has been done uh, these are not flaws this is just from the uh, some residue uh, not a whole lot of bottom detail there yet but this bottom portion has been done right here you can see that that has been cleaned up not the grate the grate has not been done so you can see a difference there in the unrestored grate versus that area none of this has been polished this is just the sanding just to remove the imperfections and whatever uh, was used to try and shellac this right a test area was done on the uh, on this uh, plastic it's hard to see but the plastic does buff out and then uh, also this side has been done too as well sanded out and you can see the slightly shiny test piece which has been all but covered over from a resanding um, as well so I tried to get in here to some of these areas uh, so just about every piece can be done on here you know there's there's little that can't be reached uh, given the proper technique uh, the broken pieces will be done separately uh, reattached uh, the areas filled using some big light techniques and then resanded again and polished to finish that off you have to be a couple of techniques to get into these grates here as well nothing too difficult though big lights real easy to work so that's what we got I've managed to recover the original schematic for this radio along with the model it's a uh, WR175 there are several models. Some of them are plastic. Some of them are Bakelite. There are some nuances in how the radio looks. Uh, there is a um, uh, 176 with a uh, phono input and what have you. Uh, with the schematic, I was also able to take a look and see that the uh, tubes were indeed right. They were in the right sockets as found as well. Um, the riders compilation here also includes the alignment procedures for these radios using a standard 455 kilocycle uh, intermediate frequency. So this should be easier to set uh, set up this radio for calibration once it's done. Also did uh, another uh, uh, cleaning of the Bakelite after it was sanded. Try and zoom in on that. It's hard to zoom in on this. And you can see the grain came out nicely. This is unpolished. You can see some polished pieces there still from the second sanding I did real quick. Uh, top not done yet, obviously, and and this Bakelite, obviously, as I said earlier, is left alone to dry out. This is purposely untouched. So that's what we got going. So I think this is well underway for restoration. I got a little bit of sunlight coming in here after the hurricane. We could get a better look and see some of these uh, sprig uh, polypropylenes that were put in. I could see a point zero five right there, rated 600. This is a, a point one rated 600, and I'm not going to uh, sit here and try and find these on the schematic right now but what I will do is make sure that those are in fact uh, correct uh, being able to see this one now in proper lighting I could see that this is a 2 watt looks like a 2 watt 40 ohm I'm gonna have to check on that too something tells me that one is not well um, I'll test it out obviously and see what we got going on here make sure these uh these coils are still good I got that audio coil right there that I have to check for inductance. I do have an inductance value to check that. And then I've got these uh, these oscillator coils over here that need to be checked. Uh, make sure those are still good as well. So some checking to do, hopefully everything's okay. Like I said, we're just trying to make it safe and replace as little as possible to get this thing up and running.